Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield back in Las Vegas. We're here at the Jewel Box Theatre here at the Erotic Heritage Museum, which is here in Las Vegas, and it's home to a brand new show that is literally taking the strip by storm. It's called Puppetry of the Penis, and I've just sat through it, and uh, we'll talk about that next. First, though, Rich, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Great to talk to you, and uh, Fitchy, good to see you. G'day. Now, I, I'm struggling. I'm trying to work out what I think about this. Firstly, I have a thing called, what's it called? Micro penis. Have you heard of this? <laughs> yeah, well, very small. Yeah, I have a problem with that. So I have this <laughs> tiny little thing. There's no tricks happening with that. I do cause fear and laughter, but other than that, nothing. And then I watched you two stand on a stage with the utmost confidence. It must be very strange to be you. Um, I wouldn't say strange. It's pretty good. It's it's an unusual way to earn a living, um, but um, it's it's entertaining basically. Um, and yeah, people are laughing at our dicks, and we're encouraging them to do it. Yeah. So. And I would bet that even with your micro penis, there's probably certain tricks you could do. And there's a camera that displays it all on the big screen, so it can make your micro penis, you know, ten feet tall. Well, it reminds people to get button mushrooms for the omelette, things like that. Uh, it, it's embarrassing. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And of course, you two are blessed. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, Thanks, Mom and Dad. Thank you. Although I am circumcised, which was not a decision I got to make, so I did lose some tricks that way. Yeah, we in England don't do that because we don't chop bits off before we know how long it's going to be. Yeah, I think that's a great, great point. I think you should keep it, keep it until you know what you got. And then if you want to do some uh, cosmetic surgery, as I say you've had, uh, then you can do it. Religious comic cosme- uh, cosmetic surgery. <laughs> I could do that just in reverse. Maybe I could have the bitch you chopped off. So this is a show called Puppetry of the Penis. And what that is, is we get a comedian to make us laugh and she warms the audience up. And tonight was an especially difficult job. As a guy who does warm up in England, I'd have punched about four members of the audience because they were having too much fun, but that's Vegas. They wanted to come and have fun, and they did. Yeah, we had some people in the front row tonight, as you noticed, um, who were celebrating birthdays, a large group of them, and they were a bit excited. They had a bit to drink before, um, which is fine. Obviously, we're not against that, and you know, people enjoy themselves. But she was a little bit, uh, just a little bit loud, a little bit answering every question. And there's a lot of rhetoric in, in comedy and stand-up as we're talking to the audience and introducing our tricks and so on. Uh, but they felt they had to answer every time, which was a little, a little frustrating. Yeah. So we were trying to get through it. But it's, it's better that than the opposite, where they're quiet. And we've had, um, early on, we've been open for a month now, um, early on we did have a couple of shows where the audience really had no idea what they were going to see, that it was going to be naked men on stage, they thought it was going to be puppets or something. And when we pull back those capes, usually when people know what they're going to see, lots of cheering, lots of laughter, lots of, you know. But there was, were a couple of shows early on where it was just, we threw, threw open the capes, Silence. <laughs> it's hard to believe people would be that naive because there's a great history of this show and of course we're almost responsible for it. I mean, it was the Edinburgh Festival that I think gave this an international platform. That's right. Um, and from there, the West End and Broadway and here now. Um, I mean, this has got a great heritage, this show. It has indeed. And, and most places, most countries where the show performs, most certainly English-speaking countries, uh, they're well aware of it. However, in, in the States, it appears that it's mainly been sort of down the coast and maybe in Midwest, Chicago and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, but in the centre, Las Vegas, a lot of people haven't heard of the show. They're not aware of it. So we are getting people that don't know what it's about. And there's a bit of, you know, we have to hold their hands, metaphorically, <laughs> and, and, and lead them into the show and say, yes, this is full nudity. You may not be expecting that, but it's fun. It's, this is a comedy show. and, and But, but they're, they're enjoying it. And the audience, as you say, Rich, they're, they're getting... Getting, they're more intuitive, understanding, and, and they're, they're loving the show. But uh, yes, the UK has a warm, a warm uh, part in our hearts for, for helping develop the show. A huge part. And the thing about this show is it is extraordinary in Las Vegas because as Sin as Sin City is, there ain't many penises on the strip. I mean, there are strict rules. And it seems to me we're sort of more liberal than you guys are here in America, and especially here in Las Vegas. There's lots of rules. You're sort of the epitome of what Vegas should be that is quite rare. There ain't that many shocking shows. Yeah, we're the first. We're the first and only show in Las Vegas that shows full frontal male nudity. And it was a challenge to bring the show here because we wanted to bring the show for years. The show's established. It's been around the world for 17 years. And it took this long to bring it here because we can't bring it to a casino because of uh, gambling, gaming laws. And uh, we can't bring it into an establishment that serves alcohol. As you say, this is Sin City. Um, and yeah, the only in actual Las Vegas itself, you, you can't do it. They've changed the laws so that they keep the strip clubs and the gambling separate. That's what they really want to do. There, there's some places on the periphery, like places like Pahrump, where they've got different rules. But in Clark County, where Las Vegas is, no, you can't do it. So we, we've been limited as to where we can try and perform. And 
but we're here finally, and we're now just getting building up an audience, and uh, we're everyone everyone's loving the show. So, that's so what we way. should say about this is it's not creepy, it's not awkward. You're not trying to be the Chippendales or Thunder Down Under. This is a comedy show using the man sausage as the crux of every punchline. That's basically it summed up, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. We're we're just trying to use. Uh, the male body as uh, you know I mean you think about man sausage then was that what <laughs> I was your eyes glazed uh, over there a bit was the man sausage yeah. alright <laughs> like but we don't like using penis and when I hear this show talked about and in every review they don't like using the word and that's the one thing that all men have got surely absolutely and it's it's, it's part of, it's an appendage it's part of it's an, your anatomy it's, it is a penis this is your hand that's your foot you know but people are like oh we can't say penis it's like well why that's what it's called puppetry of the penis uh, it's a non-sexual show it's just pure comedy there's a bit of innuendo a bit of sauciness but it's it's not a sexual show it's not rude it's not stripping we straight away you know we start the show pretty much we get the capes out off and everything's out there we go now just laugh at this and people who are shocked to begin with within a few minutes are actually going oh my god it does look like that that really is a hamburger or it is the Eiffel Tower and there's there, all the humour just comes out and they forget they're, la- they're laughing and looking at genitals it's just the comedy of what we're coming, what's coming out of our mouths and what we're doing with our bits and what you've tapped into is that sex is ludicrous and the human body is even more stupid and we all look ridiculous without our clothes on no matter how fit you are but here's my question I'm a deeply unattractive man and I ain't even showing my arms in public where do you find the confidence to stand on that stage because you're both incredibly fit okay we get it you're both incredibly well dowed okay I get it but even so even beautiful people don't stand naked in front of hundreds of others well it was the, f- the first show that I did I was terrified to do it I, and right before I came out I thought I had this thought there's 400 people in the audience that, and I don't know a single one of them and I've only ever done, the sh- done a few tricks for friends at parties and they would laugh but if I go out on this stage and they're just not liking the show, I still have to stand here for an hour completely naked, which is the most terrifying thing to think of. And then about five minutes into the show, I realized that everyone was laughing and having a good time. And then there's so much power in having that, just being naked on stage. Well, not fully naked, we wear tennis shoes, but being <laughs> naked on stage and you 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 get this burst of confidence and since that first show I've just been riding that wave and it's been really great yeah absolutely I mean you're the you're the ones there going look that's me check me out I'm exposed you guys are the in the audience you're the ones that are hiding behind clothes if you want to you know if you want to sort of have a go at me have a pop at me or whatever to get your clothes off first and then you know you, you do have that power of being being uh, being nude you see, I have the power of the mouth. I can do jokes and I can do an half-decent interview, but standing on a stage naked wouldn't be for me. Um, and then I think of it the other way. Then I think, well, there's a chance you could sort of attract people. The ladies might think you're delicious. You might get the odd number. I mean, there's another power there, isn't there? Because you meet the audience after the show. It is It is strange after the show. In fact, last week we had... We didn't realize how after they left, but we were <laughs> invited out by three strippers after the show. Um, and it's just kind of crazy because the show is non-sexual infinite so it's not like opportunities yeah no it was, it was quite a surprise it was like oh they're very nice people are, are you performers are you doing a show here and they were like kind of and then like, okay well nice to meet you whatever and then we were told afterwards that yeah they were strippers and they actually wanted to take us out for a drink which was nice it was not like we weren't in their club and they were they, were, they weren't working so that was a <laughs> that was a nice thing yeah you do meet people you know a, 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 you get propositioned occasionally by both sexes after the show but um yeah, it's just part of the job, I guess. And the comedian who came on in the beginning did a great thing where she said, who's in the audience? And the gays, and then there was a big roar. Okay, we get gay people. And then, of course, the couples. That's interesting. Yeah. Couples come and see you. just sat in front of me there. And no lesbians. No lesbians in the room tonight. That was sad. Yeah, we, we have had occasional, but... Uh, yeah, but <laughs> Uh, act, the cock is for everyone. It's just, uh, but it's to laugh at at least. <laughs> there is that. Yeah, this show's not going to turn them. That's for sure. No, no, I don't think so. And then I think about your partners and your parents and your family. Um, I can imagine that if you're a ballet dancer in Cirque du Soleil's O, that you would sort of say, "Come and come and have a ticket, Grandma." Um, at what point do you have to break the news that this is your big Las Vegas debut? Well, when I first told my mom, I, I did it in New York first, and I, and I called my mom up and I said, "Mom." I got an off-Broadway show. It's called Puppetry of the Penis. She was like, okay. And I was like, it's a comedy show. Off-Broadway. I'm naked. 
the whole time. And she, so it, it took it took some time to ease her into it, but she's seen the show twice and she loves it. She's coming out here next month too to see the show again. But my grandparents are a little bit <laughs> more. So hang on, wait, it. just hold the phone a second. <laughs> so mom's going to be in the show. Is that more creepy for you who's got to know that his mom's in the, in the audience or you knowing that yours is? Because I mean, she's seen it before at least. I mean, that's very strange. That doesn't matter. I've not, I've not met Rich's mum yet. Uh, we've known each other sort of about four years now, but I've, I've yet to meet his mum. But looking forward to it. No, it not, doesn't bother me at all. There's, there's hundreds of other people's mums watching my, my dick in this show already. When, <laughs> well, so. And I guess the great shame would be if you stood up there and we all laughed because you were hideously ugly and had a very tiny micro penis like myself. So I suppose you're having the final laugh, aren't you, really? I guess so. Uh. I'm feeling very depressed at the end of this interview. Listen, congratulations on the show. Um, it, it's just a small cab ride from the strip to get here to this erotic museum which I haven't been around what, what, what am I going to learn if I, I sort of walk the aisles um, there's a whole range of uh, things um, they, they, they look at the, a lot of the sex scandals um, they sort of have some things about that some of the uh, the internet film sensations that have gone you know the porn virals and that sort of thing they do sort of history and some displays about that there's a lot of uh, the history of uh, erotic, erotica um, I haven't done the whole thing myself yet. There's quite a lot to do. I but think if you come on, I think if you come on Tuesday night, they do nude yoga here as well. So more than just that. Now that nude might yoga. be more off-putting than seeing you guys because <laughs> those positions. I mean, do we really need to see that nude? I'm. I mean, I'm. Oof, yeah, I have to be honest. I have no. I have no desire to do nude yoga. <laughs> I've, I've never the sweating to. and the showering. What rules are there? Goodness knows, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's one of the things they do here. They have lots and lots of. They're very open, obviously. They're very pro, you know, sexual activity and and sexual openness, freedom here. Good for them. So if only I could be here. Some of it. <laughs> I, well, I just wish I were more attractive and could join in. I mean, I have great Don't admiration. Don't put yourself for you. down. Don't put yourself down. You should just no, go for I'm it. Putting myself I think, up. I think mate, I think your accent will do a lot here as well. No, that's fine, and that's great because when you're talking to someone, they don't know how small you are. You see, and by the time you got them in the bedroom, you've already wooed them, and it's too late. <laughs> that's yeah. a that's a good point. I've never had that problem, but. Well, you won't have, as, as, we, as you've proved this evening. If I could just be your penis for one day, it must be magical. I congratulate you both. Uh, Rich, been good to talk to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and Fitchy as well. Thank you, been a pleasure. Thank Great you. Great to talk to you. We're going to leave now. Pub Tree of the Penis is here in Las Vegas. It's on at the uh, Jewel Theatre, which is at the Erotic Heritage Museum. Guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.